Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a somewhat exciting and somewhat unusual discovery of a very interesting black hole right here in the Andromeda galaxy, the largest neighbor that we have in the night skies. And the reason this discovery is somewhat unusual is because of the mass of this black hole. It falls into what we usually refer to as the intermediate mass black holes, IMBH. These black holes have been very, very difficult to find, and even to date only some of them have been discovered, with none of them so far being in the mass range compared to the one that was just recently found. And so let's talk a little bit more about how all of this was discovered, what this means to our understanding of the universe, and more importantly, what the scientists have learned about the evolution of galaxies by discovering this particular object. But let's start with a brief review of the types of black holes we know exist out there. Today, the scientists believe that there are four major types of different black holes and they all have slightly different type of origin. What you're looking at right here is referred to as the supermassive black hole. These are usually located in centers of most galaxies and these are the ones that are usually easiest to see, simply because they produce so much energy by absorbing so much matter and by producing extremely powerful accretion disks and very powerful astrophysical jets that produce enough power to be visible from essentially the edge of the universe. Then we also obviously have what's known as the stellar mass black holes, and these are usually produced after a typical supernova when the star explodes, when it can no longer produce any more energy. But these particular black holes are not as easily visible because they usually require some sort of a partner nearby in order for them to absorb the mass from the partner and then produce accretion disks and astrophysical jets. But the vast majority of these stellar mass black holes are actually either entirely alone or sometimes have a partner that's much farther away, and so they're not able to absorb any mass from them and thus produce any energy. In other words, there are billions and even trillions of these black holes out there, but the vast vast majority of them are completely invisible to us. As a matter of fact, very recently I made a video about one such invisible black hole discovered completely by accident, and this was discovered in the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud. This video should be popping up somewhere right there at some point. And by definition, a stellar mass black hole usually has a mass between 3 masses of the Sun, or I guess about 2.8 masses of the Sun, and 100 masses of the Sun. Whereas supermassive black holes usually have masses in hundreds of thousands of masses of the Sun or even millions and billions of masses of the Sun. The most massive black hole discovered so far has a mass of roughly around 40 billion masses of the Sun. So there is definitely a very very large discrepancy there. But in between these black holes are these mysterious intermediate mass black holes. And the first one was only discovered not so long ago, only a few years ago. The video is also somewhere right there. Oh, and a quick side note, the fourth hypothetical type of black holes is known as the primordial black holes. And these are actually, well, theoretically possible and are probably all over the place and were probably created in the beginning of the universe. But to date, none of them have been discovered so far. So for now, it's just a theory. Anyway, so as you can probably imagine, intermediate mass black holes definitely exist and we've already discovered quite a few of them, but they've been really, really difficult to find for one reason or another. With most of the confirmed discoveries of these types of black holes coming from the detection of gravitational waves, all of the other ones so far have not been confirmed and could have been actually produced by something entirely different. And because of this, there's a bit of a mystery. There are so many massive black holes out there, there are so many stellar mass black holes, but for some reason, intermediate mass black holes, the ones that should be sort of a transition stage into the massive black holes, do not seem to exist as often. But this is where this new study comes in, because it sort of is based on a lot of theories and a lot of ideas behind the formation of galaxies, and it confirms one of the major theories, one of the major ideas. It confirms the idea that, well, first of all, galaxies are made out of smaller galaxies, and a lot of smaller galaxies will usually have smaller black holes in their center. And it's a really important discovery because it sort of helps us understand how the entire universe and all of the galaxies in the universe transform and sort of interact with one another. So what about this study? Well, they were actually studying one of the many, many globular clusters located in the Andromeda galaxy. Andromeda has roughly around 460 different globular clusters, or approximately three times as many as in the Milky Way galaxy. And according to a lot of modern theories, a lot of these globular clusters are basically leftovers of ancient galaxies, usually smaller galaxies, for example dwarf galaxies. 
So like, for example, if we look at this cluster right here, known as IC4499, it's located a little bit away from the Milky Way galaxy, and is believed to be a leftover, or possibly even a center, of an ancient dwarf galaxy that the Milky Way swallowed. These types of global clusters will often contain thousands or even millions of stars, and will also be made out of thousands or even millions of solar masses in terms of mass, with many different hidden objects, specifically black holes, neutron stars, and a lot of other interesting stuff going on on the inside. But many scientists today believe that in the center of these global clusters, there technically should be an intermediate black hole, with a mass of anywhere from a few hundred to possibly a few thousand masses of the Sun. It kind of makes sense too, because a lot of these global clusters are very compact, and they also seem to be orbiting something in the center and usually have interaction with this object. Now, so far, of all of the clusters in the Milky Way galaxy, nothing major has ever been discovered. Or in other words, even though a lot of these clusters most likely have some kind of a black hole in the center, at the moment, none of these clusters seem to manifest the presence of this black hole. But in this study, the scientists focused on this global cluster located a little bit away from the Andromeda galaxy, the cluster whose name you see right here. And specifically, here they focused on a high-resolution, optic-based and motion-based analysis of essentially the most massive cluster in that galaxy, with the goal itself being discovering something in its center. But how exactly do you find something in the center of thousands if not millions of different objects? Well, they essentially used an analysis of overall picture of motion of different objects. And specifically here, they created what's known as the Stellar Kinematic Map. These maps show us the average velocity dispersion, or the average velocity difference, depending on the region of the global cluster we're looking at. With the study uncovering a relatively high velocity dispersion that seems to rise toward the center as if there was something really massive right in the middle. Which of course suggests just one thing. It suggests that somewhere in there, there is an extremely massive object causing a lot of these stars nearby to move much faster than they would be otherwise. And that something has to be a black hole with a mass of approximately 100,000 masses of the Sun. Or the most massive intermediate mass black hole we've seen so far. Almost a supermassive black hole, but not quite there just yet. And since the cluster itself is roughly around 6.2 million masses of the Sun in total mass, it means that the black hole represents approximately 1.5% of the total mass of this cluster, which, at least statistically, is a little bit more than a typical supermassive black hole in the middle of most galaxies, but for a smaller galaxy, this totally makes sense. And so this takes me to the next point. This used to be a small galaxy. At least that's what the models suggest, and this is what this discovery sort of proves even further. And specifically, it used to be some sort of a dwarf galaxy that was eventually absorbed by the Andromeda, and so whatever was left formed this global cluster. That's kind of how the scientists today explain the existence of so many global clusters in many different galaxies, including the Milky Way. Every single one of these relatively ancient global clusters are just leftovers of ancient dwarf galaxies, the pieces from which eventually formed the Milky Way and the Andromeda. And so essentially this is a former galactic core, possibly formed by condensing a larger bulge like this one right here, eventually forming an object that sometimes is referred to as the stripped galactic nucleus, or basically a galactic center that was stripped of everything around it. And eventually these nuclei start to condense and form these relatively spherical clusters. Now this most likely existed for billions of years, and this particular cluster seems to be at least 10.5 billion years old. And in terms of the actual light produced and in terms of the actual metallicity, it's extremely similar to all of the global clusters or most of the global clusters we have here in the Milky Way. So whatever was formed here formed around the same time as the ones that we have in the Milky Way galaxy. But the thing is, based on the mass of the black hole, we can now even try to estimate the total mass of that previous galaxy that used to exist here. In this case, since the black hole is roughly around 91,000 masses of the Sun, the initial dwarf galaxy was probably around a billion solar masses. Which, interestingly enough, is actually really small. If we look at one of the dwarf galaxies near us, Large Magellanic Cloud, it's at least 200 times more massive. With the Andromeda itself being at least 1500 times more massive. So this was a really, really small object compared to what we have here today in the Andromeda. But because this is just a first paper discovering this, 
We still need to have confirmation from other papers to see if this is really there and to see if this is exactly what's happening in this cluster. Although at the moment this is still the best explanation, a black hole that's about 91,000 masses of the Sun. But the authors do suggest that maybe the motion in this global cluster is also formed by something entirely different. So definitely not a 100% conclusion just yet. And so to confirm this discovery, the scientists are now hoping to get a much more higher resolution observations of this particular region and to try to get even better maps seeing exactly where the motion dispersion happens and trying to identify if this is indeed caused by some sort of a intermediate mass black hole. At the moment though, this does seem to be the case. The elusive IMBH seems to be the best possible explanation here. And if so, this explains a lot of things and confirms a lot of things we believed about the evolution of galaxies. As predicted by various computer simulations and various theories, galaxies, large galaxies, seem to form through the collision of much smaller dwarf galaxies, with various leftovers from these galaxies either becoming global clusters or occasionally turning into these really, really beautiful formations, usually referred to as the stellar streams. The Milky Way galaxy has quite a few of these around itself, and we've talked about them in some of the previous videos, and many of them do seem to connect to various global clusters in terms of the actual orbits. And so, a pretty interesting confirmation of ideas, and a pretty interesting discovery. But once it's confirmed, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.